What's up everyone, this is Tyson. Today I'm going to show you how to program the Titan 84L in Mastercam. This is the first piece in the Titan Rocket series. It's a series of 10 parts that are completely done on the lathe. And for each one, I'm going to show you step by step how to program them. And then we also have videos on how to set them up and run it on your machine. Before we get started, make sure you have your print and your setup sheet. You're also going to want to download the tool library for Mastercam. You're also going to want to load up your model, which you should have made through Billy's tutorial on how to model each part in the Rocket series. So the very first thing I'm going to do, so I'm going to zoom out here, and then I'm going to go to Machine, and we're going to select our machine type for lathe, and I'm just going to use the default settings here. After clicking that, it made its own machine group over here. And here's where we're going to start our setup. So I'm going to click the plus sign here, and we're going to go to Stock Setup. I'm going to start by selecting a stock plane. So I'm going to click that, and it's going to give me a plane selection over here. For all my lathe parts, I like to work with the D plus Z plus plane, which is your diameter and Z plane. So we're going to go ahead and select that for a plane. So I'm going to click the check mark, and then I'm going to go into Properties, and we're going to set up our stock. We're using 1 inch diameter stock, and for the length, we just need to set the length so it's longer than the overall length of our part. Looking at our print here, the overall length is 1 inch 800, so I can go ahead and leave that at the default of 2.5 inches here. Your position along axis, that should be set to Z0, and the axis should be set to negative Z. I'm also going to turn on Use Margins, and this lets you select any extra material you want to add onto the stock. I'm going to use a right margin because I like to face off around 20 thousandths off the front of the part. So we're going to extend our stock 20 thousandths. So we'll give it a 20 thousandths right margin. And that's everything we need here, so I'm going to hit the OK button. You have more options for your setup. You can define chuck jaws, tail stock, and steady rests. I don't really mess with any of these unless I really need to, unless I have like a setup that I'm worried about the tool hitting the jaws or something. So for this part, we're not going to mess with any of these. So we just needed to set up the stock, and then we're going to hit the OK button here. So if I zoom out, you see I have a preview of our stock here. It's not quite lined up with our part. So that's going to be the next thing we're going to do is we're going to line up our part so that it's set within the stock. So now I'm in our turning menu over here and this should have popped up after we selected what machine we're running. And we're going to need to go under utilities here. We're going to select align to Z. So what this is going to let us do is we're going to be able to align one of our Z points on our model with a plane of our choice. So I'm going to hit transform to plane. We're going to select a destination plane. And the plane we're going to use is plus D plus Z again. So I'm going to click that, hit OK. And then we got to select a body to move. So I'm going to make my selection. and we're going to align our selection with the Z0 of the part. So I'm going to pick the front surface of the part here. I didn't explain it yet, but we're going to be doing this whole part in one operation, and the side that's going to be facing out is going to be the side with the threads here. And then we're going to be parting off on this end over here. So I want the front of the part to be where these threads are, so I'm going to click see it turned yellow there. I'm going to click on the front surface here, and then I'm going to hit the OK button. You can see now that our model is now within our stock. That's exactly what we wanted. Now that I moved our model where we want, I'm going to turn it into a wireframe, and we're going to use that wireframe to program all our toolpaths. We're going to go down to Levels here, if for some reason this window isn't here, go to View, and you have your Manager Selections here. 
So by default, you should have the toolpath, the level, the solid, the plane, and the recent functions managers all selected. So we're going to be going to the level manager. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new level that's only going to have our wireframe geometry on it. When you separate these things by level, you can edit one thing without affecting anything else on the other levels. You can also hide things on other levels so that you only have the wireframe showing up while you hide away the model. So I'm going to give it a number. We're just going to call it level 20. And then I'm going to give it a name. And we'll just call this one wireframe. You want to make sure the checkbox is on our new level. So that means that's the level we're working on. So any solid drawings or wireframe drawings that we make will only be on this level. Make sure that's selected. Has a little check mark there. Then we're going to go to wireframe. What I need is we have our options for shapes here. I'm going to select turn profile. And that's going to make a wireframe out of our solid model by spinning the model around and getting the outside geometry that way. So I'm going to select our model. I clicked on it once. You can see the whole thing's highlighted right now. And we shouldn't have to mess with any of these things. By default, it should be having the method of spinning. So it's going to spin the model around and generate our geometry that way. We shouldn't have to mess with the axis of rotation and the tessellation tolerance. We can leave that at one thou. You also have profile options here, so it's only going to be generating an upper profile. As you know, on a lathe, you'll be turning on one side of the part, and because it's spinning, it's going to be happening all around the part. So we really only need that upper profile to program off of. Sometimes if it's a complicated part, I like seeing the full profile, or I might just program straight off of the model. We're going to use the upper profile, so I'm going to select that and hit in selection here. Forgot to finalize my model there, so I hit in selection there. And then I'm going to hit OK because I'm happy with all of these settings. It's very hard to see, but I can see a blue outline going around the part. And if I turn off the level that has our model, we have a visible column here. If I click this X, that hides the model. And now you can see we have a profile of our part. That's our wireframe. I'm going to go back to our toolpath manager. I'm pretty happy with how everything turned out here. We're pretty much ready to start programming. Only a couple little things we have to do. I'm going to go to our lathe tool manager. And we're going to load up our tool library for the rocket kit. So I'm going to select a different tool library. And you can go to the folder that you saved your tool library into. I just put it into the default folder for all my lathe tool libraries here. So I'm going to go down and I have the rocket toolkit. So I'm going to select that. I'll open that up. And here we have all the tools in our toolkit. They're all numbered according to the master tool list for the rocket kit. And it's numbered from 1 to 13. So I went ahead and I made all the tools in them. Some of them are based off of the models of those tools from Novo. The tool lists for each of the parts, I don't have as many tools on there, so the numbering might be a little bit different. But as long as you follow my directions of the video, I'll point you to the right tool to select. So that's all loaded. I'm going to hit OK. And then the very last thing I need to do is I'm going to change our tool plane here from top and I'm going to select D plus Z plus. And then we should be ready to go. Let's add our first operation. In our turning menu, we have our general operations. I'm going to select face. So we'll click on that. The tool that we want to use for roughing is tool one, which is our 55 degree OD rougher. So you can see tool 101, 55 foot degree top notch OD roughing and turning. So that's already selected there. You can click it one more time if you want. We'll just go down the line here and fill out our speeds and feeds. For the feed rate, I'm going to go 0 0.008, so 8 thousandths. We're using inches per revolution, so that's already selected there. 
We don't need a finish feed rate. You can click this if you wanted to add a separate feed rate for finish pass. We'll just leave that alone. For spindle speed, I'm going to use 800 SFM. So I'm going to put in 800. You can see we have CSS and RPM over here. So we're going to use CSS for constant surface speed. And then we have our max spindle speed here. I'm going to give it a max spindle speed of 3000 RPM. Last you have your coolant options here. So you can click that. And you can set up how you want your coolant to run on the tool. I'm just going to leave it on for flood. So that's just going to give it an M8 in my program when it brings up the tool. So everything here is good. I'm going to go to our parameters. Only thing I'm going to change here is I'm going to turn on stock to leave. And we're going to leave five thousandths on stock to leave. We're just going to be facing off 20 thousandths of rough stock off the front of the part, so I shouldn't have to add any passes or anything. By default, Mastercam will figure out according to our stock and according to our Z0 of our part, it's going to figure out where to do our cuts. We don't actually have to select anything here because it knows our material is one inch and it knows where our part is according to our Z0. So it's going to make the face pass according to all that. If you wanted to make a custom face pass, you can select different points, a starting point and an ending point for your face pass. But usually you don't need to do that unless there's something wrong with your stock recognition. So 5,000 stock to leave. We don't need any overcuts or anything, so just gonna hit okay. So we got our face pass. For some reason it didn't quite show up there, but if I click this wavy icon here, this displays any selected operation that we have. So I'm going to click it once, and I'll click it one more time. You can see a blue line showed up along with a yellow line. Blue lines are feed passes. Yellow lines are retract rapid passes. So our face pass is made. Let's make a roughing pass using the same tool. So we have our general menu here. I'm going to go to roughing. So now we have our chaining menu show up. And chaining is basically we're selecting the start and the end of our cut so that Mastercam knows where we're trying to program. So I'm going to start with the start of the chain or the start of my cut. Let's zoom in just a little bit. I've got our chamfer right here on the front of the part. I'm going to click the bottom portion of it right there. You can see an arrow showed up. It's pointing towards the end of our part. If that arrow isn't quite right, if it's pointing in the other direction, you can click on this reverse button here. You can see that that changes the direction of the chain arrow. So I'm going to click that one more time and change it back. So it's pointing in the right direction. And then I'm going to click the end of where I want our cut to be. So I mentioned earlier that we're doing this whole part in one operation. I'm actually going to be splitting this part into two sections. The first section is the front of the part where the threads are. The second section, we're going to be doing an undercut here and taking care of the back side of the part. The reason for that is it gets pretty thin when it gets down to here. And I don't want anything funny to happen to the part when it's spinning when I'm trying to do like the threads on the front. So we just split it up into two portions. So the end of the first portion of the part, I'm going to end it at the 950 diameter on the OD. So if you look at your print, or if you remember from when you modeled the part, the 950 diameter is the largest portion of the part. So here's our radius leading down to the end of the part. And here we have our straight line, which is our 950 diameter. I'm going to click the front portion of that line here. You can see the end of the chain arrow moved to where we clicked. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to hit the OK button. So click the check mark. And now our roughing menu shows up. Very similar to when we made our face pass. We have the same kind of tools show up here. These are all the tools that it thinks we're going to use for roughing. We're going to be using the same tool, tool number one. Same feed rate. We're going to be using 8 thousandths per revolution. I don't need the plunge feed rate, so I'm going to turn that off. 
For the spindle speed, we're going 800 SFM again. And then max spindle speed, setting that to 3000 RPM max. I can see an asterisk here for the coolant, so that means our coolant's already set there. If it didn't have anything there, then I would check on that and make sure that my coolant options were all set. But we're good there, so I'm gonna go to rough parameters. And here we're gonna set up our cut. We're gonna be using equal steps for the depth of cut, and I'm gonna give it a depth of cut of 80 thousandths. Minimum depth of cut, we can leave that at 1 thousandths. For the stock to leave, just like the last stop, I'm gonna be leaving 5,000 stock, but this time it'll be an X and Z. So 5 thousandths, 5 thousandths. I'm gonna click on lead in slash lead out. Here we set the lead in and lead out for every single pass in this tool path. I'm gonna go ahead and leave the length at 100 thousandths for the lead in. We have this box here, and this is showing which direction that we're leading in or leading out. So for the lead in, we're just leading in straight across and it's leading in to the left. I'm gonna go ahead and leave that alone. We're gonna to go to the lead out and you can see now that it's pulling out at a 45 degree angle and we have a length of 100 thousandths. I'm gonna change that length to just 20 thousandths. I'm just gonna shorten up the back off just a little bit I'm gonna to go to adjust contour here and I'm gonna click extend slash shorten the end of the contour and I'm gonna extend it 50 thousandths. What that's gonna do is the contour that we selected for the chaining, it's gonna extend the end of that 50 thousandths. So it's gonna turn 50 thousandths more from the end of that contour. So I'm just gonna do that just to make sure it turns a little bit past where I selected. I'm gonna hit okay there. Last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on stock recognition and I'm gonna select remaining stock. Only last thing you wanna make sure is you have your rough direction and angle here. You just wanna make sure that it looks like it's cutting the OD here so you can see it's turning on the outside of the part in that little box. That looks good. Hit okay. We have a roughing pass. Comes in, leads out. It does 80,000 passes down the line. If I click on our 950 diameter line here, you can see that this blue line here extends and it's extending 50 thousandths. So that's what that extend contour did and everything looks good.